Ow. Get them. You squeeze so hard. Squeeze them hands. Hmm. Hey, if you're going to compete, compete to the end. Gotta be glad I don't have nothing to throw. It's so rough. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not a boy. I'm not a, I'm I'm not a, not a boy. Girl. girl. <laughs> a boy, baby. Okay. You were just going to take it, weren't you? What is you don't remember that from Friday? No. No, but we know that's your favorite movie. <laughs> that was Friday after next. Oh my god! That was next Friday. Hey, so you, know, you already know what it is, man. We back on it, man. Like yeah. a good snack habit. Hey, um, we down on these trades. I let my I let my baby pick the last two. You know, I just go ahead. I'm like, I'm a, right, I'm gonna let you get these and pick the two. You know what I'm saying? Oh, is that Here's what, a treat. is that how that went down? Here's a treat. Boy, stop. The forgotten Arab slave trade of East. Africa, Arab. Let's go. Let's go. The Arab slave trade in East Africa is one of the oldest, stretching back 700 years before the European transatlantic slave trade. Male slaves were frequently employed by their masters as servants, soldiers, or laborers, while female slaves, notably from Africa, were long transported to the Middle Eastern countries and kingdoms as concubines and maids by Arab and Oriental slave traffickers. The transatlantic slave trade, which involved Western slave dealers, has received a lot of attention and discussion throughout the years. Right. In mm -hmm. contrast, the Arab slave trade has been largely overlooked, at times even viewed as a taboo subject. Okay. Despite mm -hmm. being a crucial part of African history, and having a catastrophic impact on the continent, its generations, and the people's way of life. There you go. There you go. However, yeah. both historians and experts alike have blurred the lines on these subjects. So, in this video, we shall expose the dark past and the forgotten Arab slave trade of East Africa. During their period of dominance by Arab leaders, the Arab slave trade was the practice of slavery throughout the Arab world, primarily in Western Asia, North Africa, East Africa, and select regions of Europe such as Iberia and Sicily. Slave markets in the Middle East, North Africa, and East Africa were the core of the trade. What would he say? Talks, oh, they're the core. Iranians, Europeans, and Berbers were among the people traded in the early days of the trade. During the era of the Fatimid Caliphate, that is, the 8th and 9th centuries, the majority of slaves were Europeans taken along European beaches and during conflicts. With the emergence of the Oman Sultanate, which was centered in Zanzibar, the trading of Bantu slaves from East Africa grew in the 18th and 19th centuries. Along the Swahili coast, they came into direct trade friction and competition with the Portuguese and other Europeans. Thousands of European Christians were enslaved by the North African Barbary pirates who engaged in piracy against European merchants. They profited from the ransoms. They had a lot to deal with back then. I mean, oh. crime and everything on the water, though. That's the messed up part. Crime on land is ain't like is still different from crime in the crime oh, in the, the water. water. You got all the ocean to deal with, and you got to to be able to, you know, maneuver in a boat. Could everybody swim with weapons? And ain't no telling what else. Oh man, it was just crazy. Mandate. In many cases, in the United Kingdom. Village churches and communities raised funds for such ransoms. The government refused to pay the ransom demanded by the pirates for its citizens. Between 650 and 1900, historians estimate that 10 to 18 million Africans were enslaved by Arab slave traders and transported over the Red Sea, Indian Ocean, and the Sahara. Many of the Arab slave dealers, such as Tipu Tip and others, were physically indistinguishable from the Africans they enslaved and sold. Mm. Hence, the name Arab was commonly employed as an ethnic designation in historical sources. 
it is impossible to be specific. So it was an ethnic destination Arab. So it was a location. When you say Arab, it was a location. Okay. About actual numbers because of the nature of the Arab slave trade. Arabs enslaved Europeans to a lesser extent. According to studies, between 1 million and 1.25 million Europeans were seized and sold as slaves by Barbary pirates, who were vassals of the Ottoman Empire between the 16th and 19th centuries. Slaves were taken primarily from seashore villages in Italy, Spain, and Portugal, as well as from further afield in France, England, the Netherlands, Ireland, and even Iceland. They were also taken from pirate captured ships. Thousands of ships were lost in each of France, England, and Spain as a result of these raids. Because of regular pirate attacks, huge areas of the Spanish and Italian coasts were nearly totally abandoned by their populations. Until the 19th century, pirate raids prevented settlements along the coasts. Man, everybody mm -hmm. back then were heathens. They were heathens back then, boy. So you had people who were... I guess, I don't know if, you, if it was legally or not, you know, people who would be traveling across, you know, the oceans culturally, they just, I don't know, they maybe had more money, and you then you got the it. pirates. Yeah. They were the criminals. Yeah. You had that money, mo pa. You had that pa. Look at that pa. invading expeditions from Islamic Iberia were dispatched to destroy Christian Iberian kingdoms, bringing back booty and slaves. For example, the Al Mulhat Caliph Abu Yusuf Yaqub al Mansur captured 3,000 females and children in an assault against Lisbon in 1189, mm. while his governor of Cordoba captured 3,000 Christian slaves in a subsequent attack on Sieves in 1191. Mm. Large numbers of European Christian slaves were also taken into the Muslim world as a result of the Ottoman Wars in Europe. <laughs> The Arab slave trade is sometimes referred to as the Islamic slave trade, but slavery was not driven by a theological mandate. However, if a non-Muslim population refuses to convert to Islam, the non-Muslim population is thus authorized to be enslaved under Islamic law by the Muslim nation. Oh. Some Muslims object to the libels Islamic trade and Islamic world because they portray Africa as outside of Islam or as a minor part of the Islamic world. Propagators of Islam in Africa were often wary of evangelizing because of the effects on the prospective slave reservoir. Slavery in the Arab world predates Islam and lasted for over a millennium. Arab slave traders transported Africa. Wow. It predates Islam. Like, how long? He said millenniums? Before Islam? Like, so it, tra it transpired for over decades. Yeah. Africans from present day Kenya, Mozambique, Tanzania, Eritrea, Ethiopia, and other parts of East Africa to Iraq, Iran, Kuwait, Somalia, Turkey, and other parts of the Middle East and South Asia across the Indian Ocean, mainly Pakistan and India. Mm. Unlike the transatlantic slave trade, Arabs supplied African slaves to the Muslim world, which, at its apex, spanned three continents from the Atlantic to the Far East. Zanzibar is now regarded as one of East Africa's top Ooh, tourist yeah, attractions with I'm white sorry, sand beaches, beautiful. crystal blue oceans, and hotels offering visitors from all over the world a memorable vacation. Ooh, we have got to go. The green past that loomed over this beautiful paradise 200 years ago has long been forgotten. In Zanzibar, which is Zanzibar. now a Zanzibar. Zanzibar. That's Zanzibar. Pretty. We just got to go to Africa. Look we at have that. not been there yet. That's definitely a place for us Ooh, to go. I'm just staring at the screen. I know. So beautiful. <laughs> the autonomous territory of Tanzania was the epicenter of the East African slave trade at the time. Aside from precious raw goods like ivory and prized clothes, one thing stood out in the colorful markets above all else. Hundreds of slaves. <music> slaves.
slavery in Africa has been practiced since antiquity. When Islam was gaining momentum in North Africa in the 7th century, it became popular. Seven centuries had passed since Europeans first set foot on the continent, and ten centuries had passed since West Africans were shipped over the Atlantic to America. Arab Muslims in North and East Africa were selling captive Africans to the Middle East at the time. Castration of male slaves was a typical practice there since they worked as field laborers, tutors, or guards of the Sultan's harem. According to Islamic legal principles, Muslims, including African Muslims, were not permitted to be enslaved. Initially, Arab Muslims in Eastern and Central Europe took white so off rip. If you were Muslim, they were like, nope, you're part of the family, you're not, we can't slave you. So I'm sure people converted just on that term to like to get free. I guess so. But um, on the previous video, the um, the the guy was saying that it didn't matter. They went ahead and went against what the uh, faith based the religion was saying. Yeah. Because I, they needed the, the workers, or for whatever reason, they went against it. I mean, not just put my own two cents in it. Leaves to sell to Arabia, but <laughs> as Europe's military power grew, Islamic expansion was halted, and now that slaves were few. Arab Muslims turned to Africa in large numbers. Slavery has been practiced in almost all cultures. This was also true in Africa prior to the arrival of the colonizers. Ethnic groups such as the Yao, Makwa, and Marava were fighting each other in Central East Africa while entire peoples on the continent traded with people they had taken in conflicts. As a result, Arab slave dealers came across pre-existing institutions that aided in the procurement of slaves for their goals. So they just, they just, basically they got in where they fit in with it, into the system. Mm -hmm. In Zanzibar, the slave trade thrived. Arabs were looking for slaves to transport to the Middle East. Slavery was a component of various African cultures as well. When it came to exports, tribal Africans were the most important players. Because many African communities lacked prisons, people who were captured were sold. From the 17th century forward, the slave trade in East Africa exploded. Omani merchants increasingly settled in Zanzibar. Because of the huge trade along the Swahili coast, the island became even more significant in the international trade of products and as a result in the slave traffic. This was how East Africa's largest slave markets came to be. There are only estimates as to how many Africans were traded from East to North Africa, some of which vary greatly. This is also attributable to the fact that a large number of slaves died. According to scientific evidence, approximately three out of every four slaves perished before reaching the markets where they were. Whoa! Wow. Just about everybody died, and then whoever was left and made it, you were going to be sold. That is crazy. So mostly everyone died. Because they weren't taking care of themselves when it well, they weren't taking care of the slaves. No, period. I was say they couldn't take care of themselves. No, they weren't feeding them. No. Look at the look at the bones. Oh man, that's horrible. To be sold. Hunger, disease, or tiredness from long trips were the causes. An estimated 17 million East Africans were sold into slavery by the Arab slave traders. The so-called transatlantic slave trade by Europeans is still remembered by the majority of people. Mm -hmm. However, in actuality, the Arab slave trade of East Africa was considerably worse. See? About 8 million Africans. So, again, again. So he when says my, it was my, considerably worse. When, my, my, when, the, um, when the Muslim community reaches out and comments in the comment section, the evidence is on the table still. Let's get away from and denying. We have, and we have multiple sources and we have let's, reputable sources. Let's and, get away from denying yeah, thinking that you were different. It's, I mean, even though supposedly it was totally against Work. it. It was against it. And it was worse than the, they saying. It was worse than the transatlantic. And they still didn't listen 
to whatever the uh, belief was about not having slaves. It was, that was neither here nor there. Exactly. Everybody saw free labor and money. So were transported from East Africa to Morocco or Egypt through the trans -Sahara. Or very, 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 very cheap labor, I'm sorry. And roots. An estimated 9 million people were deported to the Red Sea or the Indian Ocean. Wow. David Livingstone, the Scottish missionary and explorer, attested that 50,000 slaves were sold in Zanzibar's markets each year. 50, However, contemporary historians have questioned this statistic. Hmm. Slaves were not all transported to Egypt or Saudi Arabia. Omani settlers began farming clothes in Zanzibar in 1820 in order to supply the growing demand in the international markets. See? Markets. Large plantations grew fast and slaves could be purchased for a low price in a local slave market. The number of exported clothes increased from 565 to 12,600 kilograms between 1839 and 1860. Zanzibar's image shifted from that of a slave trading hub to that of a slave holding center, producing infamous people such as the famed slave trader Tipu Tip. Tipu Tip. A slave insurrection broke out in what is now Haiti and the Dominican Republic towards the end of August 1791. The eradication of the transatlantic slave trade, slavery, and colonialism in Africa was greatly aided by these two uprisings. Sultan Said Baragash of Zanzibar, however, did not sign a treaty making the slave trade illegal in his territory. What I don't understand what sucks is when you look back at some of these photos and they are the um it's the slave with the oppressor. Why they make them take pictures? I don't know. Why do we have to but take it, a picture. It's still it's like still, this is a family portrait. No, but it's still traces of history. You it know, it is traces. But think about it in that time. Let's get a, everybody. Let's get a picture. But I just look and say it. See all of those slaves. You know, that's a lot. Well, he just mentioned the two uh, rebellions. But that was my thing. It was like, if it's so many more of us than you guys, and That's even though we got chains, man, please, you would have. But it was this, baby. baby. Wrapped, all all baby. you got to do is do this and choke, put a choke hold baby. on them with your chain. Baby. But the problem was here. Man. Which is, which is, and a lot of reason why we're still up here. Mm -hmm. I get it. Yeah. Till 1873, when it was pressured by the British to do so. That decree, too, was not successfully enforced until 1909, when slavery in East Africa was finally abolished. 1909, man, my grandmama was up. Uh... Wow. It was abolished 1909. 1909. And now. here, in, well, in the, in the U.S., 1864, 1865 was the Emancipation Proclamation when it was supposed to have been abolished, but, but we know that it's it still... How long, how long do you think it went on after 1865? Maybe, maybe 20 years? That's a good question years? to find out. That's Probably good, But we know it didn't because the South was still... The North was way ahead of the game compared to the South in the U.S. Correct. But yeah, this was some great information. Ooh, yes, sir. I'm glad to be learning about all of this because I really now see... How it was such a business and, you know, the darker people suffered. Yep. Yet, slave, it didn't matter what color you were because you still was a slave. You still was a slave. But it depended on who enslaved you is going to determine how you were treated. Exactly. Whoever your enslaver was, so you were hoping. It was like, almost like, I'm going to say this for an analogy, like you get that teacher that's awesome and you get that teacher you hate. Yeah. Depends on what classroom you went in. Depends on classroom. Wow, you went this in. was interesting. So this is how society across the world was built. I was just sitting here thinking about Russia. Did have we have we touched on the Russian? Because well, in some of these videos that we've done, I know they hint they they have they had a hint on it. So we got we're gonna have to go back and track this and write this kind of keep like a little log, and so we can start putting some things together. You know. Yeah. But sure. yeah, this is. It's awesome. It's, it's awesome. A historical understanding. Yeah. You no know, emotional, just all. And then the more and more, I, like I said, and the more and more you learn about the other traits, the more and more you feel is less victim to America, to, the, to the, um, what happened here. But you also see how society was developed. Mm -hmm. You see how other, how nations came into play and came into power yeah. over time. Yep. 
based off of how long they were in slavery, I guess, and how their nation was built up. Correct. All right. Well, this was good. It was. Like, comment, subscribe, don't take a nose. Stop and comment down in the section below if you want some more. Love you guys. Love y'all.